Hey guys, Anthony Petrovona here, founder of AP Growth. If you're looking to build your wealth in the stock market with options trading, day trading, or swing trading, you're going to want to subscribe. Hit that thumbs up button at the end if you appreciate it. My job here is to help you achieve financial freedom in the stock market. So if you're looking to do that, then I've got all the tools necessary for you. Today, we're going to review the trades I made last week, show you how they all transpired, see all the positions I managed and my outlook. These positions are all revolving around crypto, Tesla stock, the SPY, Nvidia, and a few others. So let's dive into the charts and take a look at the positions. First, we're gonna take a look at my account. I ended up closing the calls I had on Neo stock, 43 strike expiring December 17th. It did dip down to the 39s on Friday, but I felt like Friday was a really irrational move and I thought we would see a bounce today, Monday, and we did. Whole market has rallied from Friday, but I closed out the calls at about a $6,000 loss. So that was one adjustment I made. Another adjustment I made was I rolled down the NVIDIA calls from the 370 strike to the 350 strike on my strangle expiring December 3rd. So that's the end of this week. I also rolled down the spy strangle from the 500 strike on the calls down to 485 because I just became a little more bearish and I collected more premium because of that. So on the day, this spy strangle already 15.7 K in the green from Friday, Friday, it went really in the red because of the sell off and the VIX increase, but we're seeing a nice rebound. So we're going to touch base on all my positions from my notes here. Now, these are my notes from this morning, uh, market bounce, Omicron sees no hospitalizations yet, Fed to de delay interest increase to 2023. Likely, we had some people come out and say that Jerome Powell speaks today at 3pm. I was taking a look at PSTG for a continuation because I like the RSI being on highs and uh, I was going to take a day trade on this. Didn't end up taking it, but it would have been a great trade. I was looking at BNTX and MRNA, Moderna, for continuation because the vaccines or anything to do with biotech is really hot now because of the talks of the variant. RSI was high. I was saying could continue to start another run, like another 10 to 15%. Uh, buy BNTX or MRNA if dip on open with 30 to 50k size. So I did that with 100 shares on MRNA. I ended up buying at 363 this morning and within about five minutes, it went up to 374, took profits, was a 1k USD gain, quick little nice scalp with about 35k USD in size. But that's just a small trade. PSTG, I was going to get in pre-market at 3030. And then on the open, it was at $31, would have been a $900 gain, but I didn't take it, but good th theoretical trade. So I think it's really important that you track all the trades you do take or don't take because you need to see how things play out. So this was a trade I didn't even take, but I wrote it down and I followed along and I you know, put where I would take profit, where I would cut loss, and I followed it and then got the result and I put it in my notes. I do this with, with theoretical losing trades as well. I just track everything, what's on my mind. And um, these are just the notes that I have from this morning. So I cut uh, my two trades I ended up managing. One was uh, Hood. I took a loss on my shares. I sold the 33 strike put expiring last Friday. I sold that put a few weeks back when Hood was trading at $36. Well, Hood went all the way down hardcore. Here's the daily chart for Hood. Okay, so basically a couple weeks back here, we had this gap down from poor earnings and then I saw a nice bounce. So when we were at 36 here, I figured we would be safe and I sold the 33 strike put expiring a few days back. So beginning of November, sold the puts for expiration being end of November. What happened was an insane sell off all the way down through my strike down to $26 now. I let the trade get executed and now I am holding a significant loss. So I cut half the position, which was 2,500 shares, sold half at about $27 per share for a 14.8K loss. If I'll close out the other half, I'm taking another 15K loss. So I'm currently bag holding about a 15K loss still on hood. Like I said, I closed the NEO calls for a 6.1K loss. So in terms of losses, that's already 21,000 that I took today and I made 1,000. So basically, net, we are down 20K for today in terms of managing positions. But I am really happy because we're seeing all the other positions be massively in the green and it looks like a lot of them are gonna expire. Worthless, all the strangles we sold. The ones like Nvidia, Spy, Roblox, and Riot. So let's review those positions and see where my thought process is behind those bigger positions that we're still in. 
Okay, so on the SPY, we have the 429 put and the 485 call expiring December 17th, just over two weeks away. Market value is sitting at 11,000 left until this expires worthless, and we sold 60 contracts. This went really in the red because we saw the VIX spike massively on Friday. So let's take a look at the VIX. The VIX is the volatility index. So we put this trade on a Wednesday last week when the VIX was at about 19 because that's historically a pretty high volatility index and you can collect a lot in premiums. Well, Friday was a half trading day, so the volatility was insane. Now, half the reason why it was so insane because think of all the volatility that has to happen in a shorter period of time. It's a half trading day. So we saw the VIX go all the way up to about 27, and that was a 50% gain on the day. I remember 50% 50, 50 up from the Wednesday to the Friday. Remember, Thursday market was closed. So when that happens, all of the premiums increase. So if you were to buy any calls or puts on Friday, you'd be massively down because the volatility has contracted. This is something we all need to understand. If you are going to trade options, you want to sell options when the VIX is high because you collect a lot more in premium. If we sold all these strangles that I'm currently in from last week, if we sold them all on Friday, automatically we would be massively in the green. Why? Because look what the VIX did today down 22% from $27 down to 22. That alone, if stocks do not move and the VIX drops, if you sold premiums, the premiums contract and decrease in value. Because think of it this way, when there's less volatility, there is a lower probability of a stock moving closer to in the money on your strikes that you have chosen. That's why the value decreases when the VIX goes from high to low. So the opposite happens. If you set positions when the VIX is low and then the VIX spikes, those are gonna be likely in the red, even if the positions don't move much because the value of those contracts has increased. I just want us to all understand how the options pricing works so that way you can better place trades and time those more effectively. So let's look at the one year chart for the VIX. Basically, if you look at the past year, it's been really good for traders because volatility has been a little bit higher. If you look at the five year chart, you'll see that basically before 2020, the VIX has been from 10 to about 15, theoretically. In most of the case, it's been from 10 to 15 for the last three years. But then ever since COVID spiked and it went from six, it went all, ever since COVID happened and it went to 66, well, we went down to about a low of 24 and we maintained an average of about 20 for the VIX for a full year. And then just after the beginning of 2021, we dropped below 20 and we've been sitting at the high teens. So the high teens is still higher than the past three years before that. So it's a good time to sell premium anywhere around 20 for the VIX. So still a good time at 22, which is a trader's paradise if you're looking to sell options. The next trade we're gonna go over is on Riot. And what you'll see here is we have the 38 strike put that is expiring at the end of the week. Riot has been going up. Like I said, I, so we have a little more of a risk of Riot pushing up to the 40 level. And what do you know? We had a massive spike on Sunday for Bitcoin. And we went up to about uh, 56,000 from 53,000. This is the falling wedge I actually drew here. So we broke out of the falling wedge. It looks like we could push up to my target around 62,000 in the coming days, but we'll see. Um, everything looks good for continuation on Bitcoin at these levels. And we saw a nice push up today as well, going up to about 58,900 today. So because of that, when we pull up Riot, we saw a nice bounce up 5.8% on the day. $37, we actually hit a high of $38 today. So we got close to uh, that level. And that's great for us because we own shares at a cost basis of $38. So I would be looking to take profit if we go over to about $40 per share on Riot. Now there's only a few days left to expiration. So the value of this is $12,000. This means that if Riot pushes up to $38 by Friday, then this expires worthless and we keep all 12,000 and we're not forced to buy more shares of Riot because I already own about $100,000 worth of Riot and this would make me buy another $150,000 worth of Riot. So we don't really actually wanna do that. We put this position on because we didn't think that it would fall below 38, but it has. And I also think that it's likely that we could continue to see a push up closer to 40 by the end of the week. Now on the strangle on Nvidia, it's going really well. We're in the green. There's only $8,000 left in premium. Again, this expires in a few days. Today's Monday, this expires Friday. As long as Nvidia is above 280 and below 350, this whole thing expires worthless. We keep all our money and we get to put on another trade. So that one's going good. Riot, this strangle here, we actually rolled the previous 
strangle we had on Riot. It was a tighter strangle. I believe it was a 30 strike put in the 41 strike call. We just bumped it up a bit because we saw it's likely for Riot to push up. And we actually didn't take any loss on this. We collected the same premium. So we rolled the Riot strangle here from 30 put to 33 put and from 41 call to 47 call. And because of that, it was net net position. We collect the same amount of premium and we're 1000 in the green on the day. 10 contracts and this expires December 17th. So two more weeks and $4,000 left in premium on that. Neo, this one is going good. 36 put, 49 call expiring in a few days. There's only $700 left on that one. This one is in the green by 900. And then we have the Riot one here that's expiring worthless in a few days. 28 put, 60 strike. Have good confidence that that one's not going to be in the money. So that one's all good. Quantum Scape, again, another good one. 28 strike put, 44 strike call. We'll take a look at this one on the charts. There's only $900 left in premium. And I think we got a little bit of a bounce on Quantum Scape today. So we'll put up on the chart for you. Oh, we actually went red now. My apologies. We were green on the day and we went red now, $30. But again, if you take a look at the chart, as long as it doesn't go below 28 here, and as long as it doesn't go above this line here in the next three days, then we're good. Uh, we could test this level here. I remember I talked about it in the previous video where we had the 50 day moving average just above 28. So we could see a nice bounce on the 50 day. We'll see how it plays out, but not concerned there whatsoever. Next one is on a firm, the 100 strike put and the 170 strike call. This one's about to expire worthless. We won't go over this trade. Lucid, another one, 35 strike put, 70 strike call, expire in a few days. We won't go over this one. It'll likely expire worthless. Only a little bit left in premium to collect on those ones. Then we have Tilray. This is the 9.5 strike put. I actually rolled this one up from the nine strikes to the 9.5, collected some more money. So let's take a look at this one on the chart. <clears throat> Till rate down 3.8%, continuing the downtrend now at $10.16. Like we said before, we think the $10 level will hold. If it doesn't hold, we think the $9 level will really hold because if you scroll back to the previous times here, you'll see we had a lot of buying in the mid nines and a lot of buying in the mid eights. So because of that, there are buyers in that area. We could see a bounce around the $9 level if the $10 level doesn't hold. So we're really close to that. We'll see if it holds. If not, that's okay. But there's not much money left in premium to collect on that one. Next one's on the Roblox, 3,200 left in premium to collect. This expires in two weeks and the strike is 90 for the put, 150 for the call. Let's take a look at Roblox on the chart. It's having some good strength still. Let's see if it's still green on the day. Yep, continue to push up at 127. So as long as it doesn't make new highs up there at 150 in two weeks, and as long as it doesn't break that $90 level, then we're good. I think we could see strength and we could see new highs on Roblox, honestly. But what we're banking on is that it's not gonna push up a whole bunch higher. It could, honestly, it could. The $90 level, I think it. I'm much more confident in it not hitting 90 than hitting 150 because metaverse topics, you know, they have insane growth as well. There, there's a lot of momentum behind Roblox. And Neo is sitting at $40 on the day. We don't see, uh, have, I'm having less and less faith that we're gonna have the strength to push up. So we're just gonna let this one be here. So on, on the day, we're up 61,000 in this one account, and that's mainly due to Tesla stock. We're up 40,000 on Tesla stock. So well, Tesla's trading at 1132 right now, and we're trading basically sideways recently. When Elon's done selling, we will get that green light to go back up to all time highs, as long as the SPY continues to hold up. And the SPY is looking good. So we're at 465. It's possible to see a rally to all time highs, that typical Santa Claus rally everyone's talking about. We'll see what, what happens. I still think we're gonna trade sideways, but a lot of people think we're gonna see that melt up to new highs at the 480s or 490s to close out the year. We'll see what happens. But these are all the trades I'm in. I don't, I'm currently not long anything. I'm only selling premium. So all the trades I'm in, I'm just selling premium except Tesla stock because I'm a little more cautious. As you can see, I have 390K USD cash in this one account. So. I'm heavier in the cash. I still think we're gonna have more volatility, more sideways action. I'm not so convinced we're gonna see this melt up. If we do, that's okay, but I'm positioned either way. So this is the most cash I've ever held because I'm the most cautious and I'm a little more experienced than before. Plus, the more I have in cash, the more I'm able to put on trades like selling strangles because I'm less concentrated in Tesla stock. When I hold Tesla stock and a significant amount of cash, I'm able to use more leverage safely without getting a mar margin call to go ahead and put on more strangles and collect more premium. When the VIX is in the 20s like it is now, I really like to sell strangles and collect pure premium on higher implied volatility names. So that's my whole thought process and that's those are all the trades I'm in and those are why I'm in those trades. When I put on new trades in the coming weeks, 
I'll let you know. But for now, these are the trades that I'm gonna be in for the next week and it won't change in the next week. Let me know in the comments below what stocks you're watching. Subscribe for more videos just like this. I wanna help you achieve financial freedom in the stock market. Give this video a thumbs up if you appreciate it and I'll see you in the next video.